So does masturbation, wanking, spanking the monkey, jerking off, does it, even any ejaculation, does it really lower testosterone? Here's a real science explained. How many times have you heard that masturbation is a secret culprit behind low testosterone or making you miss out on your gym gains? You might have stumbled upon claims about no fap or just maybe one session of wanking uh, or ejaculation or having sex before the gym could completely tank your T levels. But is there any truth to this at all? Or is this just an internet myth? And what it has to do with testosterone or the perceived notion of these post-orgasmic crashes So today's topic is quite big. There are so many misconceptions about ejaculation, masturbation, and testosterone. Why do they feel that it lowers testosterone? So there are real hormonal shifts that occur after you ejaculate. So when you ejaculate, what happens is you have this sudden uh, release. And prior to ejaculation, you've got all this dopamine, you're really in the mood. And when you release, there's a hormone called prolactin that rises and your dopamine falls. But what does the research actually say happens to your testosterone levels? We know dopamine goes down, prolactin goes up, that can affect how you feel. So why do people believe masturbation, which eventually leads to ejaculation, is to blame for low T? So here are a few common reasons. Myth number one, you feel tired and then you equate the tiredness to low testosterone. You know, after an orgasm, it's normal to feel a bit tired, to feel a bit down. You feel as if your testosterone levels are plummeting. But feeling tired isn't the same as actually having a major hormonal change or having a drop in testosterone levels. So no fap. Everyone's talking about no fap. If you don't fap, if you don't masturbate, if you, don't, if you masturbate but don't ejaculate, it's going to be the cure-all for all the issues that affect you and for your lack of energy and motivation. And this was very popular a few years ago, and it might still be popular with some. In my opinion, a somewhat of a benefit to maybe resetting the clock for some people if you were constantly involved with you know, porn and masturbation and find it's affecting your productivity and that you, you're finding you'd rather do that than go to the gym or feeling tired after the gym, you know, perhaps taking a little bit of a break from it can enhance your sensitivity later on. But anyway, the no-fat movement, this popular movement, it was about abstaining from masturbation so that you can dramatically improve your testosterone levels. And you know, some people had reported feeling really good and optimized and energized and motivated after going through long periods, months, without fapping but that doesn't necessarily translate into what the data says regarding sustained rises in testosterone levels so myth number three has to do with losing that vital essence you know i think back in the old days folklore and, and, and that certain cultures believe that some people think or thought that ejaculating was draining the life force out of you, reducing your testosterone levels. But science shows um, this to be a bit more of a legend than, than fact. You know, a lot of these myths come from conflating how you feel after an ejaculation to what actually happens with your hormone levels. So let's dig into the reality for now. Hormones fluctuate throughout the day. Your testosterone level is higher in the morning normally if you're under the age of 40. So it's falling a little bit in the afternoon around 3 or 4. Picks up maybe again a little bit later around 7 or 8. Then starts dropping before it rises again early in the morning. So to understand why people feel this post-release crash, we need to talk about two key players that are signals, signaling molecules, and also hormones. So there's dopamine and there's prolactin. In fact, prolactin is almost anti-dopamine. So what is dopamine? Dopamine, this is our feel-good neurotransmitter. There's these signals in the brain that work between the synapses of your neurons. Dopamine is responsible for that sexual arousal, for feeling good, for having a desire to do things. Uh, dopamine can be responsible if it's low in ADHD. But dopamine is very strongly uh, affected with our sex drive. Dopamine is also involved in Parkinson's. When you have low levels of dopamine, you tend to have the issues with uh, Parkinson's and, and movement disorders. So dopamine is our feel-good neurotransmitter. It helps with sexual arousal. It helps with orgasm. And it, it's the surge of dopamine that, that puts you in, in the mood. Immediately 
after you orgasm, after you ejaculate, dopamine dips down and then you don't feel like doing anything again because then prolactin rises. So it says, oh, I'm done. I've had sex. I feel good. Um, I'm not motivated to do anything. I might have a bit of a, a kip, a bit of a nap. This is completely natural. This happens to all of us. And dopamine, usually when it's high, keeps your prolactin low. But a drop in the dopamine doesn't necessarily mean that your testosterone has bottomed out. It just is a way of your brain trying to restore some balance and give you a bit of a break. So after ejaculation, we know that prolactin is this hormone that spikes. It spikes after orgasm. It's very much tied to the refractory period. And that's the period in which you really don't feel like having sex at all. You're kind of just flatlined. You don't want to have sex. And it's just, it's a window of time. It's individual for some men, uh, younger men in particular, you can ejaculate and in a short period of time, they're ready to ejaculate again. It might depend on how turned on you are by your partner. It might be turned on by how much sleep you've had, how hydrated you are, but it's also internally how your, your dopamine interacts with your prolactin. Uh, and so uh, that's your refractory period is that time before you're ready to get around to, to ejaculating again. So higher prolactin uh, can, uh, in the short term, temporarily uh, lower your sexual desire. It makes you want to sleep a bit more, you feel more relaxed. And again, this is normal. It's short-lived in most people, and, and it doesn't really represent a permanent or even significant drop in testosterone. It's a different hormone. It's prolactin. Now, we do know that people who have hyperprolactinemia, uh, it does suppress their testosterone levels. So that's when someone has a pituitary, benign pituitary tumor uh, within the, in the brain, which then may suppress the output of testosterone. And, and that's a completely different condition. But the temporary normal rise of prolactin and the drop of dopamine is what normally happens after an ejaculation. So the bottom line is these hormonal fluctuations, they're short term, they're part of your normal biology, and they can make you feel a bit drained, uh, less eager to do anything really, but lie in bed for a little bit. I've, you know, we've all kind of just fallen asleep as, as men after, after that. So, um, but it's not really tanking or dropping or crashing your testosterone for days on end, or it shouldn't. So what does the actual research say on testosterone levels after ejaculation? All right, so let's talk about testosterone specificity. What does the science say? Some studies have measured testosterone levels right before and right after ejaculation, and most show there's no significant decrease that, that maintains itself or persists. So it might be a blip, but it's not significant enough. It might be uh, on certain individuals, but overall there's no significant decrease in testosterone levels that persist. And if there are any fluctuations, it's really quite minor, quite mild, and it does return to baseline very quickly. What are the longer term effects? So frequent masturbation, if you did it all the time or frequently, or any form of ejaculation, not just masturbation, but masturbating till you get to, to ejaculating, it doesn't seem to lower your average testosterone levels over days or weeks or months. In fact, overall sexual activity whether it's by yourself or with a partner, has not been linked to lower testosterone. There is some interesting research suggesting that uh, abstaining you know, for a few days uh, can cause a brief uptick in the sexual desire and maybe a small temporary spike in testosterone, but it's not usually enough to cause drastic changes in your muscle mass or your mood or energy. I think what happens probably is that you're, you're not dropping your prolactin dopamine's rising, you've got a stronger recovery period. That's probably what happens and why, why that occurs. But for the vast majority of people, you know, masturbation won't make or break your testosterone levels or your profile in any significant way or lasting way. And again, that's assuming that you're not on testosterone replacement therapy, testosterone therapy in general, you're getting your testosterone from an exogenous source, a source outside your body you're not as constrained by what your body's producing, but you, you will, after ejaculation, regardless if you're on testosterone treatment or not on testosterone treatment, you do get an increase in prolactin and a decrease in dopamine for that short period of time. So what lifestyle factors can really affect your testosterone levels? So if you're truly worried about low testosterone, here are some big ticket items that can have a real impact on your testosterone levels. So one, we know that sleep is really important and chronic sleep deprivation can really impact and lower your testosterone levels. Uh, in fact, you should aim for seven to nine hours. 
Stress also has a really big role to play. If you have high levels of stress, it elevates cortisol, which can suppress testosterone levels over time. Some even say a high stressful period may even cause gray hairs due to the uh, excess cortisol levels. Exercise and weight management, number three, it's regular weightlifting or high intensity workouts are really healthy in maintaining testosterone levels. Obesity, you know, lying around on the sofa, that's probably not so great for testosterone levels. Now, do be careful not to overtrain because overtraining isn't great for testosterone levels as well. So you have to get the right balance. And nutrition is also important to eat a balanced diet, plenty of protein, healthy fats, your micronutrients, vitamin D, your zinc, your magnesium, all the things that we know can help boost testosterone. Now, alcohol is an interesting one in smoking. Alcohol and smoking, especially excessive alcohol consumption and smoking can negatively affect your hormones and and not to mention your lung health and everything else so or your liver health so alcohol alcohol can lead to fatty liver disease something that's not going to be good for your overall metabolic health so these are the real game changers not whether you indulge in a a cheeky wank or a masturbation or a temporary ejaculation, but really focusing on what really matters for your testosterone levels are your diet, your sleep, your exercise, and avoiding alcohol and stress and, and, uh, and smoking. So does masturbation lower testosterone? In any long-term or meaningful study, the answer is no, not that we can see. The, the tiredness or the lowered motivation that you might feel post-orgasm has a lot more to do with dopamine, our friend dopamine, and our not such good friend prolactin rising. Obviously you need prolactin, you can't have nothing, but prolactin for a lot of men can be a real problem having to do with the libido desire and that refractory period after you ejaculate. So, you know, rather than blaming your testosterone levels at bottoming out, maybe we ought to blame prolactin rising and a drop in dopamine. So if you're experiencing symptoms of fatigue, uh, reduced libido, difficulty building muscle, increased adiposity or body fat around your midsections, talk to a healthcare professional or contact Balance My Hormones or go to our website, balancemyhormones.co.uk and we can help talk to you about what the next steps are and what the options are and what you might need to do to get tested for hormone deficiency. So that's where you would want to turn to, to see what your options are and how to improve your health and well-being. So thanks so much for watching. We hope you found this information very helpful and informative and maybe clear up some misconceptions you've had about dopamine, prolactin, and if masturbation lowers your testosterone, hopefully by now you see that doesn't. So anyway, let me know in the comments if you like this video and what your thoughts are and if you agree with me. And if you want more content like this, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Balance My Hormones. I'd love to continue to hear from you and continue the conversation. Mm -hmm.